Hi, Uncle Patrick. Hi, uh, uh, Xiao Tian. Ni hao. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Patrick. You can call me Patrick Wudu. Uh, don't call me Uncle. Uh. Uh, call uh, me Patrick Wudu. Okay. okay. Uh, may I know how old are you? Okay, this year I am... Uh, year, I'm, I'm born in a year of pig. Uh, so this year I'm about 47. Okay. Alright, so ne nearly 5, but this still has 3 to go. <laughs> 50 as in uh, 3 to go, okay? Right. What is your occupation? Alright, I would say my occupation is a coach. Okay, many people say I'm an accountant. Yes, I am an accountant by profession. Right? But however, uh, over the years, I think I have developed another kind of uh, model for myself. Right? Not only I practice as an accountant, tax agent or even company secretary um, but I'm more into a coaching kind of advisory work at the moment which I enjoy a lot yeah. How many companies have you have? Okay, um, I think today if you talk about companies uh, I mean uh, the company that I manage right yes the company that I manage I think it will be about um, 10 about 10 so it would be like um, accounting firm related companies would be about six and then of course other than accounting business we have other ventures with other partners like for example the Memorial Park and the one you all probably know uh, Hongye Memorial Park at this uh, opposite Sri Lala along uh, Jalan Batu Pahat right that is another new venture which we started about 12 years ago alright then the other six companies was actually started um, during 2003 when they came back from Singapore uh, and I'm sure that those company which we started, it's not easy because some of those uh, company really takes a long, a lot of effort you now to make it run smoothly and getting people to come in, setting up system, right? So I think uh, basically these are the company structure that we have. Okay. Okay. How do you manage the companies? All right. Um, I think managing a company is more like an art, A R T. Uh, 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 isu, all right. So, so when you manage the company, basically what you need to do is, um, you need system, all right. You need people, you need methods. One more time, uh. Important thing you must say twice, all right. So people, methods, all right, and system. So basically, people into place, getting them into the right place, all right. Putting the right person at the right position. That's that's very important. Number two, tools. Tools. For example, you have um, system, all right, and tools. So these are the, so for example, SOP, uh, Standard Operating Procedures, all right? And then uh, your daily routines, uh, and of course, some of these are appraisal, all right? The appraisal that you need to assess after you have a project going on, you have things uh, done, and these are the uh, post assignment, uh, review, and appraisal that you need to uh, look into so that you can always, always uh, fine tune, improve over time. Uh. And I think managing company is, very challenging now nowadays because of um, the economy, um, um, what do you call it, environment, uh, and also the uh, political uh, issues in this country. And not only that, we also see like um, China and the America, the US having a trade war. So this is also affecting a lot of businesses. So when you say managing a company, um, not only you need to look into the internal factors, but you also need to understand what is happening outside, you know, outside the business model which is like Malaysia, Asia, or even the world trade uh, situation. Huh? So that you can um, tailor-made or you can um, change your strategy huh? okay? to actually work towards a more um, a healthy structure or a more, uh, I would say, um, encouraging environment for people to actually join your firm or join your company to work together. Huh? Okay, right. Solve the problems you have. Okay, solving problem. Um, I must say, the key factor is communication. Tell, go tong communication because I think uh, between people and people is about passing on the right message. Because without a message being you know uh, conveyed or passed over, I, I'm sure a lot of these uh, so-called uh, uh, messages or strategy or methods or ideas uh, cannot be um, um, cannot be interpreted properly uh, so the me the method or the manner that you communicate with your people with your peer including like teachers and students uh, you all have a lot of classes every day uh, so in order for the students to get better results 
communication is important. So for us to solve our problems in our business environment, uh, communication with our customer, communication with our um, team or our staff is also very crucial. Because if you say the right thing, you get the right result. But if you pass the wrong message across, then I think your result will not be that good. Uh, so I think communication is always a, a very important factor in uh, problem solving um, uh, 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 issues. Huh? Okay, right. Next one. I think you can see our Facebook. All right, we have very exciting uh, events, including like team building, seminars, uh, lectures, and short coffee talks and all that. So I think in particularly, I enjoy uh, teaching. All right, not not to say teach as in school, but teach as in business uh, issues and coaching our clients, coaching our uh, staff in terms of getting their technical updates. Huh? in terms of uh, learning the latest. Uh, knowledge so that they can take care of those uh, uh, so-called the problems that they face and I'm sure that this event that we do is more for continuous learning all right continuous improvement so, and all this learning and improvement is for what purpose is to enrich your knowledge to enrich your confidence right and to enrich the way you handle matters and how you tackle them so when you see issues coming in don't run away I always tell my, my team when you see problem, you should feel happy because problem helps you to improve. Alright, well, this is how you look at it more positively. Alright, okay, next one. personality that you have until you're able to manage the company? Ah, okay, wow, that is a long story. Eh? Okay, uh, first thing first, I went to Singapore for my education when I was 9 years old. That was during 1980s, eh? I think before you all were born. Eh? Okay, so um, after my Singapore education, I continued with uh, KL um, colleges for training program, which I uh, went to the UK right, to continue with my accounting my degree and also my professional papers in the UK, uh, particularly in London and Glasgow. Then when I came back 2000 and sorry it's 1996 actually, 1996 I came back. I was still learning, I was still working for uh, the big four, right, the BDO KPMG accounting firm where I spent about eight years in Malaysia and Singapore. Uh, so by then, uh, after eight years of practice, uh, you'll be able to acquire uh, skills of um, solving problems. So when you say, when can I start to manage my business? It's when you can actually solve problems confidently. When people come and see you, when people come for you for a solution, you are able to give them methods to overcome their, their problems. That is where you are able to handle your own, your own methods independently. Alright, so I think probably that is about year 2003. No? Uh, when I came back, then I think my dad actually fought you. He had a stroke. So I had to take over the firm. So from there, we started with four staff. Four only, eh? uh, Then until today, we have more than 200 staff. But of course, uh, all these other staff are not just in Keluang. They are in Batu Pahat, Moa. Okay? Uh, Singapore. Alright, including Penang, Setiawan, Ipoh, Singapore, Labuan, and other uh, countries in Malaysia as well. So we have other partners that come into place. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when you manage company, it's not just your own effort, it's a team effort. And you need partners to work together. Like for example, Facebook, which I always, I, I place it here, so, so that you can see clearly right in the video, right? Built to last. Whenever you do, whatever you do something, you must always think about whether it is sustainable. Sustainable, the reason is sustainable. So whether what you, what you do is something that you can last. You want to do big, you want to do 
you know, uh, um, um, a lot of people coming to join you, uh, kind of thing. But you must always always think that the sustainability factor, all right, in your business model. Uh, this is what I uh, would like to share with you on this. Okay. What was the hardest decision that you had ever made? Ah, this is a very interesting question. Um, during my past, I would say, 24 years of uh, practice, uh, since I graduated, um, after I came back here, uh, I think one of those um, hardest, of course there are few, but I want to make a, a, a clear um, option on this is uh, we decided to merge, we decided to join uh, another accounting firm alright and the decision to join them is actually very um, very crucial why things are different now uh, not like our father's time our grandfather's time we just um, you know uh, very hard working huh? uh, good knowledge uh, you can be able to you know, survive your business model or you do well but in this new environment huh, coming 4G coming 5G and all the AI is coming in. Eh? So things are different now and we need a lot more resources. And you can see that from the Facebook, from a lot of uh, news and all that, information now become very, very, I would say, very rich. Which means there's too many things for you to read. And you are not able to read all this within one day. And the information influx will actually gives us a lot of knowledge that some are good, some are not good, some may be useful, some may not be useful. So you've got to filter all this. So when I mention that means you, are, you need to be able to manage your resources before you can think about whether what you build can last. Because resources means your information, your knowledge. So the hardest um, thing so far I've done for, for my uh, career is actually to, to join a larger firm okay, from my existing one okay, to form a bigger partnership to form a larger partnership so that we can serve our customer better all right to train our staff uh, in a more systematic way and of course to add everyone's knowledge and value uh, so uh, it's not easy uh, because uh, if you were to sort of like uh, i won't say give up uh, i won't say give up you will say you would uh, uh, join a larger uh, team i'm sure you have more opportunities uh, in terms of your people, in terms of your prospect. And just now, as I say, I'm 47 this year, right? So when am I going to retire? <laughs> so joining another uh, another uh, bigger uh, team or uh, a more structured team, I would say it's also uh, a plan for my future retirement. Uh, of course, it's too early to say when I'm still 40 plus, but it is a long-term planning. All right, because when we come to the age of 60, 70, uh, we hope uh, what we have built so far uh, alright, will last for another 100 years. What we built so far, uh, hope that our, our, our staff and our colleagues uh, will be able to continue with our legacy and continue with their career within this uh, working environment. Oh, okay, right. What is the biggest factor that has helped you to be successful? Mm, okay. Uh, I think to be successful, what you need to do is that you are open to opinion. Alright, because learning is uh, endless. When I say oh, learning is endless, means uh, learning is always a very long term kind of uh, process. Uh, so to be successful, you must be willing to learn, willing to listen, willing to accept. Whether it is someone criticizing you, piping it, how the poor. You must take it positively, take it constructively. Uh, then only you'll be able to understand that some comment for you or some people trying to um, uh, criticize or even trying to suggest some useful uh, improvement uh, tips or improvement advice, uh, you'll be able to take it and make it an improvement point. As I say, problems come, you must feel excited. Uh, it is, a, it is a, uh, I would say, opportunity for you to improve. So the success factor, I must say, is continuous improvement. In continuous learning. 
and be willing to accept uh, people's criticism uh, so that you can improve uh, over the time. Okay? Mm. If you could start all over again, what would you do differently? 就是如果我重新来的话, if I were to start all over again, uh, this is like a what if question. Uh, if you do uh, programming language, what if, what if. Alright, so what if you were to start all over again? I think I would I would say I would like to learn more about HR knowledge. HR is human resource. Alright, HR is uh learning to you so how you manage people better. Uh, if you were to say start over again or to start on a different footing, I would say uh, I would like to learn more about managing people. Mm, because a lot of things is about people. Whether you want to do this, whether you want to do that, or whether you want to make a turn, make a switch of the profession, it is all about people. So communication, people, networking, connection, all that is very important. So if I were to restart again on this profession, I would like to learn a bit more on how we manage people better. I think it's something that I, I, think, I think I would like to share on this. Oh, okay? And last, uh, what is the best advice you can give to us? Okay, um, advice to students, uh, not teacher. Huh? Mm, okay. I think for, for, uh, for everyone here who is listening to my video, like Sartian is making the effort to come and see me, which uh, I, I really appreciate. Mm, I think this uh, is a good question to end this uh, interview because I think uh, Xiao Ting has uh, actually made a great effort uh, to come and see me and I'm sure that hopefully this video clip will help you Alright, uh, best advice My encounter with the uh, younger generation nowadays I find that a lot of people are not quite clear what you want to do They don't know what you want to do next and of course, what's the word? What is the word? You guys are writing essays and then you write like I want to be doctors I want to be whoever, whoever. But end of the day, it may not be the, be, the, be the profession that you choose. So my advice for everyone here is that uh, focus on what you do now. If you're not clear about your future um, planning, focus on what you do now. By focusing on what you do now, then you'll do best in what you do at the moment, which is your studies. Again, which is your focus on how you gain knowledge, the basic knowledge. Because before you can move on to the next level, right? You must do well what you do now in order for, for you to have better options in the future. Now, you just need to do the new things. You will have better options. If you don't do the new things, you will have better options. So, please focus on what you do now and be able to follow teacher's instructions and be able to follow teacher's instructions and a lot of reading. Okay, you need to read, you need to read, you need to read. 读相关你的课业的 uh, 不是去Facebook啊 因为Facebook只是一小段 You must go for the, for the proper, proper uh, books Alright, like for example If you are interested in physics You can always ask teacher What are the reading material that you can read Then you can always do some research here and there So reading, alright Of course, another thing is number two You need to have a self-discipline 自律 Alright, you need to have self-discipline Because without any self-discipline then I think um, your exam may not be in good term and good shape, like I must say. Huh? So you need to learn how to be disciplined and focus on what you do. And lastly, my advice. Please also be aware of what is happening around you. Alright? There's more than just the textbook itself. General knowledge, for example, the newspaper. So newspaper is a good reading habit. Okay, I know a lot of people don't start don't don't read newspaper. But at least you pick one of those papers that during the weekends like the star. Okay, start to learn English. Alright, at least this part you can improve so that in the future, if you were to move on to your um, pre use or universities, eh, English is still the most important language. Alright, because when you do research, a lot of articles are based on English. Um, topics and, and languages, right? And I'm sure that with, with um, a proper attitude in terms of learning and acquiring those new knowledge, uh, in the future, I'm sure everyone will do well. Alright, so remember the first, the first the, the three advice which I gave it to you. 
All right, which are one one more time. I I will conclude again. So I will conclude again. Okay. So number one, please be able to do reading. All right, and then focus on what you do. And of course, please please pick up an uh, English paper to start to read over the weekends. This is where you will improve your English um, at this stage, uh, and that will be good for your future development. Okay. So any other questions you want to ask? I think uh, other than the question that you posed to me. Or your personal question, just one more before we end this. Anything you want to ask? Ah, uh, no. Okay. Uh, then okay, lah. Then I think this is a good uh, sharing. Uh, so I hope that uh, all the students who will listen to this uh, video or watching this video, um, hope that you learn something. Ah, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you.